India's GDP looks big, but what about the NDP? What is the hidden cost of GDP that we do not know? And why government is considering the shift from GDP to NDP? GDP shows production, but NDP shows reality. Hello everyone, welcome to Vajram and Ravi's Flash News. My name is Shubhangi Singh and today we are going to understand that why India is considering a switch from gross domestic product to net domestic product. What do they mean? What is the implication? And what changes it will bring along in terms of our national income? So let us begin with understanding that what exactly is happening and why India is considering all of a sudden the switch from GDP to NDP. So if we talk about SNA, that is System of National Accounts 2025, that is issued by United Nations and India is trying to align the national accounts with this system of national accounts that is the updated methodology system that has been introduced. So as per SNA 2025, that is system of national accounts 2025 that has been introduced by UN, it says that, that the net indicators, they are the ones which reflect the sustainable income and if we are using gross indicators there is a possibility that we have exaggerated numbers in terms of welfare. So in this context India is considering to align with the newly updated system that has come across and the timeline that we are considering is not immediate it is in next five years by 2029 to 30 and that will also be done in the guidance of IMF. The whole idea behind it is to ensure that we also have a proper understanding of the rapid of the rapid capital accumulation that is happening, the rising depreciation burden and also environmental stress which is not appropriately visible when we are only looking at gross indicators. So for the very same thing, a technical subcommittee has also been set up which is already looking into the methodology and understanding the data and how the switch can be facilitated. But the most important thing for us here is to understand that why GDP has all of, a all of a sudden become unsuitable. So in what context why GDP is not suitable and why NDP becomes more suitable. Now when we are understanding the first thing we need to start with is to understand that why are we going away from GDP and why NDP is a preferable option, why are we making the switch towards NDP. So when we are talking about GDP, which is a gross indicator, which tells us the total monetary value of all the goods and services which are produced in the domestic territory, there we get to see we have no idea of the depreciation that is coming in. We have no idea of the capital investment that has been done and also the environmental stress that is present. And in this context, we also get to see we only have the idea of gross value added, no idea of the net income because when we are looking at GDP, we are not looking into wear and tear of infrastructure, which is what? Which is depreciation. We don't know as a separate value here, the obsolescence of machinery that is happening and if the natural capital is depleting. It is ignoring all of that. Just to give you an example, let's just say a family is earning 10 lakh rupees in a year. But if they are spending 3 lakhs in the repair, in the maintenance, keeping up to the things, then actually if, are they earning 10 lakhs? Then actually they are earning 7 lakhs. So in the whenever I am pitching the value 10 lakhs, we are ignoring all of these values. And that is why we get to see that GDP will increase even if the roads are not working fine, even if you are not getting the electricity, even if the nation is crumbling, even if the mineral reserves that we have, they are shrinking, GDP can still continue to rise. And that is why the SNA of 2025 has highlighted that gross value indicators can sometimes exaggerate welfare. So we get to see that GDP is overstating the economic well-being also and the fiscal capacity as well. 
so first we have got clarity that why gdp is not giving us the clear picture the whole picture what is exactly missing out now let us move to understand better that how ndp might be able to now let us move to understand that how ndp might be able to solve this particular problem so when we are talking about ndp we have to understand that the equation that we use here we have to see that the equation that we have here is that ndp is equal to gdp minus the depreciation when we are talking about depreciation it will include all the loss of value that has come with wear and tear assets losing value the roads breaking and minerals shrinking so all of this will be accounted and the real income will be shown again going back to our example 10 lakh is the family's income they have spent the amount on maintenance that will be deducted and we will actually get to see the real income so this is what we have 7 lakhs what they earned was this and we deducted 3 lakhs for maintenance so this will give us a clearer picture that how much money is actually available and that is why ndp net domestic product matters because it is going to show us the real number the sustainable number which will actually stay it will show us the real income and it will have a clear accounting for the assets that are being damaged now when we are taking the differentiating factor here that is depreciation if depreciation is not so big then i don't think it will become a problem but that is the main thing the depreciation that we get to see especially as of now in our country is huge if we talk about depreciation that is basically the consumption of fixed capital if we look at it based on current prices it lands somewhere between 22 to 26 lakh crores that means almost 10 to 12% of our gdp is going in as consumption of fixed capital that means we are getting the compromised picture by this particular range and if we take an example let's just say for financial year 2025 we have the number of 295 lakh crore and as per 10 to 12% the depreciation is around 24 lakh crores that means ndp will sit somewhere around 270 lakh crores there is a difference of almost 25 lakh crores here and this output when we are talking about it this is the replacement cost it is not the new addition and if it is not the new addition then why it needs to be celebrated as the increased national income this gives us a false imagery in this particular context now the next important thing that should come in your mind is if we are talking about depreciation being this high and that being the problem then why exactly is depreciation this high in our country so there are multiple reasons for it when we are talking about structurally high depreciation that we get to see in india so the first reason that you get to see here is as of now we are infrastructure heavy growth model based because we are a developing country we are working day and night towards to enhance infrastructure to ensure that logistic cost is reduced which is again almost if we talk about 14 to 15% of gdp and it is double of the global average that sits around 7 to 8% we want to reduce the logistic we are investing heavily in infrastructure be it roads railways ports power and all of this has high physical wear and tear so public capital which is present here that depreciates very fast and furthermore we get to see that because we are again a developing country our focus is on capital formation and capital expansion we want to add assets quickly increase them and this faster accumulation is also a reason that we are getting to see equally faster aggregate degradation we have also reasons such as lower asset longevity because when we are talking about long term planning we are missing out on climatic stress the overload that can happen maintenance gap and all in all it reduces the asset life to give you an example let's just say we created a road 
but we did not take into consideration a situation of flash flood which could have been caused by climatic stress. Now flash flood situation, the road that was newly made, it becomes filled with potholes and the asset di is diminished. So this is what we need to take in consideration. Another big reason that is specially associated with our country is the substandard technology and the technology obsolescence that we have seen for long. That means when we are talking about the rapidly changing world, the technology is the main driver here. And we are seeing that this fast turnover that is happening all across the world, India is not able to catch up with it. So the capital that we have, the technology that we have, that is becoming old and obsolete even before it is being fully utilized, leaving it further defunct. And all of this, if you add up, you will be able to understand it is nothing but a developing economy effect. When we are looking at advanced economy, the depreciation rate sits generally on the average of 6 to 8 percent. When we are talking about India, that is facing around 10 to 12 percent. It is something very typical that we get to see, especially in developing and fast building economies. So this is not a special scenario that is separately happening with India. But yes, we need to take this in consideration and mend the national numbers accordingly because GDP as of now shows the income exaggerated more sharply as compared to mature economies, which will not give a fair comparison. And India's true income as of now is already a net concept, but the policy discourse that we have in front of us, that is GDP centric. So that also needs to be addressed. We have discussed this shift, why this is happening, why GDP is being considered to be changed, what in makes NDP more preferable. But the question is, if this shift happens and if there is a huge gap of depreciation in front of us, will it actually change the growth rate that we talk about and will it fall? So we have to consider the first thing here that the growth rates will not drastically collapse in this scenario. But the most important thing that will change here is the composition. The composition and the effect that it has, that will be visible and that will be understandable for all of you. For example, when we are talking about, when we are talking about the increased GDP in our country, that is infrastructure led that is being driven by the infrastructure that is being created in our country and the high depreciation is eating away the net numbers that we get to see but as a result gdp growth might be labeled as seven percent ndp growth will be somewhere around six to six point three this might signal lower income but this also signals a sustainable long-term furnishable income and this is not an indication of recession at all. So when we are talking about this change, the main thing that will happen here, not the growth rates going negative, not the growth rates collapsing, but the composition and understanding as well as the sustainability here will change. And that is why this shift becomes very important for a developing country like India because we are building faster and at the same time we are depreciating even faster. So GDP is only giving us an insight into speed. But when we will have NDP numbers in front of us, we will be able to look into efficiency and durability. Going back to the example of the family we were taking, if we will keep assuming that we are earning 10 lakhs, then we will plan accordingly to 10 lakhs. But if we know the real scenario that we are earning 7 lakhs, we might be able to plan better, address the situation better. And same is the scenario with India. If we make this switch, India will be able to prevent this illusion of prosperity, focus on sustainability. It will have a proper re-evaluation of what kind of productivity is tied with asset. And it will also be able to see in the gaps which are associated with maintenance in order to ensure that we have the growth which is not just speedy but also sustainable at the same time. Another thing that net domestic product brings on the table is understanding the environmental cost. When we are talking about NDP, we get to see that it deducts resource depletion. 
so if we are talking about mining which is an example here as an economic activity this might show increased gdp but here it will lessen the net domestic product because it is reducing the future income so it directly integrates in environmental cost and it also brings into the picture the intergenerational equity both of these factors missing from the gross indicator and that's when when we are talking about our net zero goals our climate change commitments our macro policy green gdp all of this will be able to be aligned with our national income indicator in itself which will facilitate the policy making as well now on this note i'll be concluding i'll be leaving you with a very simple logic here that gdp answers one clear question that how much you are earning but when we are talking about ndp it gives you a real insight into what actually you have with yourself on this note i'll be leaving you with a practice question here you can put down your answers in the comment section that was all from my side thank you so much mm -hmm.